Hello everybody. So I ended up having a friend of mine drop off this wonderful buck that he got and I am going to tan the hide. I'm not going to use the head but he's absolutely beautiful. So I'll clean him up and uh, flush him out and I thought I'd just show you the process of that. This is definitely not the day I thought I was going to have when I woke up. So um, I'm going to get started on this and thought that I will show you the process of how I do this. I've got to figure out how I'm going to flesh this boy out. All of this meat, all of that membrane, all of this stuff has to come off or it's going to damage the hide. So we don't want to do any of that. All the holes that are in the hide, like this one right here and this one here. You want to patch up and sew with a needle. And I am just going to start seeing if I can pull some of this off. I don't want to cut the hide. Just want to get that membrane off. So all that meat stuff. It's all got to come off. So. I don't have a fleshing knife. This is only my second beer that I've, I'm processing. So I'm, I'm just going to curve my blade and just kind of rock it, shave it towards me. It's kind of like, kind of like if you were shaving your legs, take the blade and you just gently drag it across. That's what we're doing here. Just pulling that membrane off. I want it to all look that white color. Just like this right here. All this membrane, all this stuff has to come off. So that will give you a better tanning. Um, for those of you who want a little closer view of what I'm doing, my blade, which I'm probably going to need to sharpen it here soon. I'm just curving it, so I've got a nice curve, and I'm just barely catching the edge of it and rotating. So that blade comes like this, just barely catches that lip of the meat, not the hide, and just kind of pulls that up. And that will help keep um, my hide from getting cut. And since I don't have a flushing knife, a little fish filleting knife is what I've got. So that's what I'm using. This is going to be a little bit trickier. You want to make sure that if you're doing this, that your blade is nice and sharp, which I probably need to sharpen my blade again. I'm just going to get that lip started just like I showed you. But because this is so fleshy, I'm just going to start pulling and cutting that down as I go. There's, there's a lot of stuff there. I don't know if you can see that. Hand might be in the way. But I don't want to cut the meat or the hide. So maybe I'll just have to take the hide, take my blade, and do it a little bit long like this, maybe. Just pull that hide so it's taut. And maybe. Maybe I can do a better job. And again, folks, I am not a professional. This is just the second time that I have done this process. And no, folks, I am not going to brain tan this hide. I'm just going to probably salt cure it and use some borax. Now, borax helps keep the smell down 
and the salt helps pull all the water from the hide. This part's going to be really tricky. I just might cut sections down to about the hide. There it is. I'm just going to just lightly cut right till I can see a little bit of white. Again, I don't want to cut my hide because I want to do stuff with it. However, I don't have a flushing blade, so I've got to do the best I can with what I've got. So I'm gonna take my blade, pull the flesh, just cut right along there. There that goes. That's a lot of stuff right there. I definitely do want all of that to come off. And I'm using too long of a blade for this area. Again, keep the blade pointed at a downward slant angle. I'm probably out of frame, but keep your blade pointed downwards. Pull the Pull the flesh and just gently scrape back. So that's off. That's off too. All right, I'll get to this other section. I'm going to pull the hide for this one. I'll just take my knife and just, again, slowly cut back. Hopefully checking, making sure I'm not cutting the hide. So I don't want to do that. All right. The flush up. Pull the hide down. Keeping my blade pointed downwards. Again, angle cutting, eating the fat off there. And I'm using a really cheap blade, guys. I don't recommend ever doing that. If you're going to do this, get proper tools. <laughs> Best way I can tell you. I don't know if I showed you guys, but there is a difference between the hide and the flesh that we're pulling off. Um, better watch what I'm doing. Now, if you can pull anything up off away from the hide, like that, that, um, that stuff can come off. This area here is just skin. So, um... You don't get to pull anything off of that. See, here's the membrane, and there's the skin. So there's nothing to pull off the skin. So um, keep that in mind when you're flushing, because if you go too deep, you can uh, cut your hide. But if you don't go deep enough, you can leave some membrane like this on the hide. If you can right here this most white spot if you can't pull anything up on there that's good but this stuff that has to come off so um, it's the membrane the flesh and this part right here is the hide so I thought I'd make that a little bit more clear for those of you who are seeing what I'm doing for the first time and don't know how I can see what I'm or tell the difference between what I'm doing I've watched a lot of um, videos on YouTube, definitely watch what the pros are doing because that can that can help you as well and I'm just pulling scraping pulling scraping pulling scraping see here's my hide here's the membrane I gotta get all of that stuff off 
there I cut my hide so I got a little too deep you can see the hairs follicles through the hide there and so I might need to stitch that can you see the little black dots there that's the that's the hair area right there so I need to be careful this is getting a little thinner out here All right. pull scrape pull scrape Keep the blade pointed downwards. Let's do that. Keep all that dirt that's in there. I want to get all of that out. This is where it'd be awesome if you could take it to the laundromat. <laughs> and a spin cycle. And it brings out most of the water. So we're having a soap on a rope would come in handy. I should probably show you guys how to make that. All right. Rinsing them off. And fine tooth combing. So I don't have any salt handy, so I am just going to start spreading some borax all over. We only want it on the inside of the hide. This is going to help draw moisture from inside the hide to this borax. And when it starts feeling damp, I will strip the borax off along with salt. I'll get the salt and redo it. Borax helps cut down the smell because it does have a smell when it cures. So again, you're dealing with dealing with raw flesh, so what do you think it's going to do over time sitting out? So, I think about those. I'm probably going to cut those legs off. But now, I'm just going to dip this in the hide. And I'm going to roll it up for storage. Tuck the legs in. And I'm just going to start rolling it. I didn't get quite enough. That's where I'm happy with it. There we go. Down the legs. Hold the legs on the inside. And this will keep for a while, just, just like this. I'm going to put in a plastic Tupperware container because, again, I didn't, I wasn't ready for this. <laughs> I should probably do that when it's hunting season. But again, I was unaware. So, here we go. Tuck that in a little bit there. Tuck this in here. Just 
a little. All right. Now I'm just going to bubble. So later on, hopefully, if I can get something set up to where I can put the put the hide somewhere so it will dry and all that water will come out of it too then I will do that so I had already just pulled the the deer hide off the board and uh, I'll get to show you what the, the hair on side looks like pretty pretty as you can see um, now what I did when I tacked it to the board and I don't think I explained it very well in the last video is I set it on the board, uh, hair side down, and then I pulled from the top right here by the neck and pulled upward on the board. What happened because of that is the board then just brushed all the hairs going in the proper direction of the hide. That keeps my hide from getting all rumpled up like that and drying that way. So I wanted to make sure all the hair stayed nice and smooth and dried as, as flat as I possibly could get it. Uh, one of the things that you got to do as well, now that it's all dry, it's, you have to get all the borax off. So take a damp rag, borax and salt, and uh, rub that stuff all the way off. And uh, you can brush the hide as well. Picked up this little brush. Again, if you've seen a lot of my other videos, you know I'm a big fan of the dollar store because you can, you can get a lot of good stuff down there. So what I'm going to do is take my brush brush in the direction of the hair and just kind of do this and brush downwards. This is going to flush the hair up but it's also going to get some flexibility in there and it's not going to, you know, again try and break the hairs that way. So you want to keep it all going the direction of the hide. Sorry, you got uh, stuff going on in the background here but uh, this is what I had available to me so this is what we're doing. So that's that's what you do to the top of the hide. Make sure all that hair stays nice and fluffed up and brushed out. Now the underside, because the, the hide is still pretty dry, it's pretty stiff still, you have to break the hide. There's several ways you can do that. You can put it on a board and do this, or a piece of rebar if you want to, hide side in, and just rub it and, and break it and loosen up the fibers. Um, this hide is really, really big, <laughs> and it's stiff, so um, it's also a lot of, you know, weight, and, you know, it's, sometimes it's easier just to take a board or another type of thing to, to rub on the inside of the hide, but I don't have that handy at the moment, so again, I'm just going to do this, pull it up, get the hairs going the right direction, smooth it down. Um, when I nailed it to the board, what I meant by the star pattern, the last video is you nailed one section of it down but then went over here and then over here and just kind of worked it that way and then because again the hide likes to try and pucker so you want to try and not have any of that you want to try and let it dry as smooth and as flat as you can so um, found out that just you know nailing it to the top and then just going straight down on either side was not working very well so found out that maybe a star pattern crisscross that way tend to work a little bit better so you don't have to keep pulling nails as you're going. It still has some of the flesh on there. Um, you'll probably have to take some kind of a sander or something, hand sander, get rid of all that, but that's, that's, the, that's a little bit of membrane that's still on there. And again, you know, you can uh, sand that off. It's not a problem. So, one thing you do after you're done with this part is you oil the hide. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do now. And then as I'm oiling it, I'm just going to take the hide and just start rubbing it back and forth like this. And that, I don't know if you can tell, is already starting to loosen up the hair and the fibers, which you want to do. So I'm going to do that across the whole thing and get it softened up some more. Let that oil work down into the hide some more so I get it nice and flexible and usable. But um, I think for this hide I'm probably going to use it to um, train horses to uh, 
a smell of deer. So that way I can use them for hunting or search and rescue or whatever I'm going to do. And they hopefully will not spook over a deer. Because <laughs> they kind of know what it is already. But um, yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. Hello everyone, welcome back. So it has been one year since we last tanned this hide, since we fleshed it out, got it all taken care of. And as you can tell, it's held up extremely well. I'm really excited. But I wanted to show you guys what I ended up, what I did anyway, uh, to finish this off. So on the inside of the flesh side of the hide, washed it really, really good, made sure all the salt, all the borax was off the hide. Then next what you can do is oil it. I use Neat's foot oil. You don't have to. Professional tanners say not to use it. Other people say you can. It's really up to you. Next, what you're going to need to do is work the hide a lot. If you don't, it's not going to be soft and pliable as this one is, which I've had to work with it a lot to get it this way. Next, what you're going to need to do, and you can spray it with a little bit of vinegar. That's going to make the hair really, really shiny. It's going to pull any oil, anything that might still be on the hair back out of it. And you'll end out with a really nice, shiny, beautiful, soft, hide that just looks great. So I just wanted to show you guys that without any professional tools, basic tools like a flaying knife, you can actually produce a really nice hair on hide yourself at home. And uh, if you like this video, you can come back for more tips and tricks later on. But for right now, I'm going to cuddle up with this and use it as a blanket because it's nice and warm. But uh, if you enjoyed this, come back for more videos in a bit. See you guys later. Have a good one.